Hello everybody and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. As always, my name is Steven. I don't think that's changed yet. And today we are going to be creating this DC comic logo. Now, like many of you, I went and saw the Avengers when it first came out and I loved it. So to show a little bit of respect, I thought, hey, let's do the logo. And it's actually a brand new logo that they uh, just came out with recently as well. So to start off, I am using Photoshop CS6, but you can use, um, you know, Photoshop 94 if you would like. I don't think many of this, many of my techniques have changed. So uh, you can buy this font that they use. I think it's called like Gotham, which makes sense. But uh, I'm just going to create it with some vector shapes because I am cheap. So to do that, I'm going to create a new logo. And if we look at this font, we can kind of see that all it is is one big circle and a rectangle with a circle cut out of the middle and a rectangle right there. Very simple. At least that's how it appears to me. So I'm going to just expand this a little bit. I'm going to grab my circle rectangle or my circle, my ellipse tool right there and just holding down all or shift. I'm going to drag out a big circle like that. And I'll change that color so it's easier for you guys to see. And now what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a quick rectangle that I will resize later. I'm just going to draw it out like that and let me change this color so you can see it better. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. And one nice thing with this Photoshop CS6, which is going to be easier for me and not for you older folk, is when I click or when I use the arrow tool, the arrows on my keyboard, to move a vector shape, it moves it by one pixel, so I don't have those half pixels showing up. So I'm just going to align it with the bottom of the circle, and then I'm going to grab these top points and bring that down to the top of that circle, and then I'm going to lower the opacity. So what I'm going to do is just combine these two shapes. So I have two vector shapes right here. So now what I want to do is make this rectangle in the center of the circle. So with my black uh, selection tool, the path selection tool selected, I'm going to select the circle and you can see that these anchor points show up and this is the direct center of the circle. And I said circle too many times right there. But I'm going to say it a couple more times. So now we want to make this rectangle right in the center. So I'm going to move it over a couple of pixels and then click and you can see that the anchor points are, it's not lined up with those anchor points. So I'm going to click do it again, and I'll do it just like that. Good enough. And now what I want to do is move this left hand side, uh, this left side, over to the edge of the circle here. So I'm just going to drag that over, just like that. So now we have the letter D, but we want to have that cut out for the letter C. So to do that, I'm going to grab the path selection tool again, select just the circle and then I want to make a duplicate of this. So rather than holding on Alt and dragging it and then having to realign it back over there, I'm going to just select that circle, hold on, hold on Alt and click the arrow left and it made one duplicate of it over one pixel. And then I'm going to click arrow to the right and now I have a new circle right on top of the old circle. And then I'm going to click Command T. Um, Command T and that's going to have my free transform tool and if you don't like shortcuts you can come on over to edit uh, transform or actually free transform right there and then holding that alt and shift so it scales proportionally from the center I'm gonna drag this down and we'll go uh, I don't know whatever looks good probably something like that click the check mark and then change it so it is subtract from shape. And then uh, we also want one more subtracted from the center here. So I'm going to drag out a rectangle, about that size. Select this rectangle and this circle. Oops, the shapes have to be combined. Select those two shapes, the rectangle and the circle. And then I'm going to line it uh, by vertical center. Perfect. 
and then I'm going to select just this rectangle and let me scale it in a little bit and I'm going to have it as subtract from front shape there we go and maybe it's a little bit too small so I'm going to scale it up just a little bit perfect so now you can see we have the letter C maybe this inside circle is a little too small or too big so I'm going to select that inside circle and I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more and ooh, that's hard to say maybe just slightly like that and we'll call it good I don't want to waste your time alright so now that we have the basic shape we can start creating this um, kind of like the D is getting peeled back like it's uh, revealing the C in the backward I think of it like Superman when he takes off his suit and he's got his Superman suit in the background that's kind of what it reminds me of so what I'm going to do is duplicate this vector layer with the DC and now we have a basic shape that we can use to create that um, that peeling back effect so pretty much all I want is we can delete this we can delete this take these two shapes and we are going to merge them into one shape perfect and now all we want is just to have a little angle piece so I'm gonna grab this top um, oops no actually all I can do is create a new layer and then with the pen tool I'm gonna just click here and click right here make that shape around and then combine these two shapes and then I'm going to subtract this shape from that shape so again uh, subtract from front shape there we go and now we have the basic idea right there we just need to make that curling effect so to do that I'm going to create a new layer again zoom in and let's see what this looks like so you kind of see it's like the curve here goes around and then a curve right there so let's start right up here I'm going to zoom in I'm going to expand this a little bit I'm going to click up here make that curved look zoom out and just quickly draw out a shape over here I'm just going to quickly speed through this because all I'm doing is messing with the anchor points and trying to create that shape. So take your time, make it look pretty. I am going to go at hyperspeed now. Click Alt, click here, and then just connect these two areas over here. I'm going to put one dot in the, well, we'll get to that later. Connect that. And now let's add some points so we can curve. I was about to point with my hand but realized I couldn't. We're going to curve the center area here. So I'm going to add a point here, add a point here, and then grab the direct selection tool and we're just going to drag that out just a little bit. And then let's darken this color just so we can see what's going on here. Let's zoom out and then I'm just going to modify the shape a little bit right here because it looks a little jaggedy. Once again I'm just going to fast forward through my tweaking of these anchor points. Okay I'm gonna call that call it good enough. And now we have the basic shape and all we got to do is add some shading. So to do that um, above this layer right here we'll call this middle and we'll call this curl. So above the middle layer I'm gonna create a new layer grab my paintbrush tool and a black color and I'm just going to oops, let me make my brush a little bit bigger so it's a softer shadow and I'm just going to paint in a little shadow there and a little bit over here and then create a clipping mask bring down that opacity and then on this one, on the curl, I'm going to double click and I'm going to add a gradient overlay and I'll change this the shadow angle so then it's dark on the bottom and light up here so for the first color I am going to grab this 
like a dark a dark blue gray color like that and then I'm gonna keep that white click a little bit and then we'll make the end a little darker here I'm just adding different anchor points for different shades of gray and blue and all that um, just messing with it to try and get the same look as the original DC logo All right, so now I think I'm good with the colors. What I'm going to do is just mess with the angle just a little bit. Like that. That's good enough. And then I'm going to add an inner shadow. So I'm going to click on this inner shadow. Change this to, let's try overlay. A color of white. And then distance, not much. Size, barely anything. And I'm going to click Alt-H to hide the vector area. Like that, and then I'm going to turn down the opacity, just so it's a slight little glow right there. And then I'm going to add a drop shadow, and this is not going to be uh, very much drop shadow. I'm going to change the angle again to something like that, and I'm going to change out the distance, bring that, bring that closer, bring down the size. And then bring down the opacity. All right. And now we're getting there. So now one thing I want to do is add a slight gradient to this blue. And I'm going to add a gradient like that. And just change this to overlay. Bring down the opacity. Just so it gives it some character. And now this color I think can change. Well, I'll just leave it. If you want to change it, you can. It seems a little too dull. Let's just do that real quick. Go to gradient overlay. I'm going to select this. Um, let's see. Gonna just change that slightly. All right, that's good enough. All right, click OK, click OK, and then let's change this to white. Change this background color to something darker. Zoom out, and there you go. You got a sweet looking DC comic logo. Perfect. Alright, if you guys have any questions, be sure to shoot me a PM or an email, and I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, let me see what you make. Uh, feel free to email me uh, what you create. Uh, you don't have to create the DC Comic logo. Maybe you can change this to, like, um, I don't know, your initials or something. Have fun with it. As, as always, be sure to subscribe and to rate this a thumbs up, and follow me on Twitter. Um, what else can you do? Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.